look at it yourself. I mean, there's machines that are raising dust. Uh, there's uh, vapor rising from uh, huge uh, containers, cylindrical containers. That's just going on right now. This, this wasn't an ancient civilization. This is going on right now. Um, definitely, definitely. I've seen it myself firsthand, so I know that you are not pulling our leg. Uh, to call in and talk to John Lear, by the way, uh, the number is one six four six six five two two nine one seven. At six four six six five two two nine one seven, feel free call in and ask him any questions that you have on your mind. John is a wealth of information. <clears throat> Uh, one of the impressions I got while I was looking at it was that there was something very ancient there, and there was also something very new there. I have seen the the uh, bucket wheel excavators kicking right. up the dust, as you say, and I've seen some very old bucket wheel excavators that look very decrepit as if they've been out of commission for a long time. That could be, yes, yeah, that very uh, and I think the reason why we're seeing the bucket wheel excavators is they're so enormous. They're not small mining equipment pieces. No, it's, it's there's huge equipment up there. And, you know, I had the great fortune. Uh, as a matter of fact, let me take this break here. I just wanted to say hello to my daughter, Allison Lear. I know she's listening. Hi, Allie. Um, one of the, uh, about a few years ago, I had a chance to talk to a real bona fide government insider and it was the only one I ever got to talk to. Uh, he didn't have long to live, and he didn't tell me a lot. He was he was still um, abiding by his uh, sworn oath of secrecy, but he did give me a few hints. And one of the things he told me was that he said, John, I worked on a piece of mining equipment down south, and he, he named the state, I forget what it was, Alabama, Arkansas, someplace down there. It was way out in the middle of nowhere, and they were building a huge piece of mining equipment. And he says, John, when we got we got through with the thing, the thing was so huge. And I think he mentioned something like 30 or 40 stories, and it covered several acres. Um, and he said it was so huge that as the program came to an end and it was almost finished, uh, he said, I rented an airplane and I uh, at the local airport just to fly around and look at the enormous uh, construction that we had built, this enormous piece of mining equipment that was going to the moon. And I said, wow, fantastic. I said, how did they get it there? And he says, I don't know. And that's how compartmentalization works in the world of secrecy. In other words, he built the equipment, but they wouldn't tell him, uh, you know, uh, how it was going there. That wasn't his need to know. His need to know was uh, the fact that, uh, you know, that he had to build the equipment. And the other thing he told me was <clears throat> the uh, was the fourth astronaut that was killed in the Apollo 1 accident on January 27th, uh, 1967, when Virgil, uh, when uh, Grissom, White, and Chaffee were killed. There was a fourth guy in there, and uh, the fourth guy was uh, down there by the um, uh, under the seats, and uh, they would place a guy there to uh, help them through the uh, practice countdown. Now, this was, of course, several months before the actual launch, but they had a lot of problems to work out, and they would do these practice countdowns, and they would put the fourth guy uh, in there to uh, help them sort out the problems. Now, normally it was Joe Shea, and Joe Shea was uh, the guy that was head of ASPO, the Apollo Space Program Office, and, uh, but he wasn't there that day. It was another guy, and uh, when the fire occurred, uh, the National Security Agency, who was in charge of everything there, cordoned off the area for 45 minutes while they took the fourth astronaut out uh, and uh, took the body. And then they let NASA in there to uh, deal with the bodies of uh, uh, Grissom, uh, Chaffee, and White. Now, the reason they took the fourth body out is because he was part of the secret astronaut team. He was the one... Uh, NASA's secret astronaut corps that was established the same time uh, as the astronaut corps that we know about, but they were the ones that did the flying, went to the moon in 1962, went to Mars in 1966, and throughout the solar system. And what they couldn't afford was for the public to find out there was a fourth guy in there because they would want to know who he was, where he came from, and what he was doing. So that had to be kept as a secret forever and ever, and that's why they took that body out. 
and that's why the public never learned that there was a fourth astronaut killed in that fire January 27, 1967. So we have a secret astronaut program. An astronaut corps, secret astronaut corps, and that's what Gary McKinnon stumbled on. He was the uh, the guy that uh, the guy that lives in England that accidentally stumbled on to the list of uh, NASA secret astronauts. And that's why he's being prosecuted. That's why they're trying to extradite him to the United States. And that's why they plan to give him 70 years in prison. And uh, they're saying because he hacked into uh, a secret government uh, computer when he didn't. Uh, he didn't actually hack into it. He didn't use any secret codes. He just went into places where uh, you normally don't go, and this one place didn't need to, didn't need a, a specific password or anything, and and he saw this list of the uh, secret astronaut corps, and of course that irritated the uh, the powers that be, and that's why they're being so harsh with him. They don't want anybody else to do that. Okay, we have a caller. Let's see what he has to say or she. I haven't made a hello. You're on Each and Future Radio. Who is this? Uh, hi, John. You guys, how you doing? Fine. How are you? This is uh, Mitch from Michigan. Mitch. Do you have a question for John or a comment? Oh, I was just tuning in, seeing what uh, you guys were discussing this tonight. Yeah, we're talking about the moon, the pictures on the moon. Uh, we're talking about the cities that are up there and uh, how we accidentally uh, discovered them and uh, how you can find them on uh, the pictures on above dot. Oh, they're, they're, and there's cities on the moon now? Yes. Oh, I didn't hear that one. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, I uh, did the uh, George Norrie show here a few months ago, and I prepared 25 photos uh, for um, uh, C2C, coast to coast. And it's amazing that every once in a while, as a matter of every, in fact, every, you know, maybe a couple times a week, they put those pictures up. If you go you to. You wouldn't their, have a link to that, do you? I'm, I'm actually got my browser right in front of me. Um, what they do is before the uh, uh, the show starts, uh, they actually put these 25 photos up there, and there's photos of the cities. You can see the spaceport. Um, uh, you can see tubes. You can see uh, perfectly uh, constructed buildings there. Some of them are Pentagon-shaped. Some of them are round-shaped. Uh, but if you don't see it there, you can go to above.secret.com, go to John Lear's Moon Photos, uh, and go through that thread. Now it's, I, I think it's a hundred pages long now, but uh, you can go through there and find all those pictures uh, of the cities on the back side of the moon. Or you can go to thelivingmoon.com. It's thelivingmoon.com, and all of uh, the, or not all, but a lot of the photographs have been arranged into categories there for you to look at. All right, I'm looking at one of them. Where's the one you said where it zooms right in? You can see tubes and stuff. Um, which one are uh, Which one are you on? I'm looking at the one right on the, the Living Moon front page under the unicorn. It says proudly presents, and then it's showing a picture here. Oh, oh. okay. Just click on the book cover and go oh, to the cover. side. Right there. All right. Oh, that's the old face. We've all seen that. Uh, no, are those verified? Are they? Uh, oh, you guys got two of them, or there's more down farther? Huh? It's more down, yes. There's now, if you're, if you're at uh, uh, Mitch, if you're at uh, Pegasus, uh, what, what it's on the LivingMoon.com. Right, the LivingMoon.com. It's a very interesting picture, right at the beginning, where it says Pegasus Research Consortium proudly presents. Uh, if oh. you'll get to that page. I'll show you a picture of Aristarchus. Aristarchus is on the uh, side of the moon that we can see. It's the brightest object that we can see. This object has been whited out uh, for time immemorial by NASA and everybody else that uh, has control of any prints. This <coughs> is the li living moon? Um, yeah. yeah, the very first page on the livingmoon.com, the cover of the book, the living moon cover, um, has really? a photograph of... Yeah. Do you see that see the, structure? I see the Living Moon Forum, the Living the Living Moon Mirror, and the Living Moon Mirror too. Right. Well, on the very first page of the Moon dot com, when you see right below the picture of the Pegasus horse, you'll see a, okay. a cover of the book. Yeah. 
that is a picture of Aristarchus Crater. That's and what it actually looks like on the moon. It, and it, that's a, a nuclear reactor. I, I believe it's a fission reactor. You can see the blue color around it. Uh, the blue comes from uh, radioactive material. Reactor. The blue comes from radioactive material uh, coming in contact with air molecules. Damn, I never thought about it like that. It does look like it, don't it? Yeah. And that's a photo you won't see from now. deep, in, but to picture that though, don't you? Um, what happened was recently. Uh, Is that verified though? That's not verified. What's no, not verified? That it's that it's holding nuclear material. No, no. No, no, that's my theory. That's what it looks like. That'd be all over the news if they if they uh, verified that. <laughs> yeah, a lot of this would be all over the news. <laughs> would it? <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, but if you click on the living moon uh, um, and you page down, let's see if I can come up with it right now. Uh, I'm not sure where the bucket wheel excavator is. It, it's a fantastic uh, picture that uh, Zorgon did. And uh, it's just as clear as a bell. I can't find it right now. Well, which of the Copernicus images is it in? There's so many. There's page after page of anomalies here. Yeah, the picture that um, the place that uh, Zorgon found called the Keep. And the reason he called it a keep is that it's exceptional. It looks like the operations center, and there's obviously a building there and uh, the bucket wheel excavator is behind it, and uh, there's all kinds of, of neat things on there. Um, Ron specializes in um, rocks and minerals. Um, Ron is also known as Zorgon. Um, he recognizes a lot of the... Um, okay, here we go. It's, um, if you go to... Uh, livingmoon.com, go to the next page, you'll see grid map of Copernicus photos, and then under there on the right-hand side, about six, um, uh, six lines down, it says the keep on area Copernicus number one, and you click on that, and uh, then you can uh, go down, you can see the keep, you can see the buildings. And the huge see, excavator. Yeah, and Decrepit. he's colorized it so that you can see it just... Uh, uh, Operating there on that. Uh, uh, I'm not. Uh, what, which what are I clicking on again? Okay, which page are you looking at? I'm at the second. I'm at the second page. Living on the moon. Second okay. second page. Click on the book. They start scrolling down until okay. you come to the grid map of Copernicus photos. It's under Copernicus mining operation evidence. You scroll on down. I scroll on down. I see a green menu. Right. It's oh, down. mining operation evidence. Yes. All it's right. in the Which second one? column. It's about the sixth link down. It's called the keep area on cop number one. All right. I found it. And that okay. whole page has photographs of that area where there are there's buildings, there's smoke, there's a huge decrepit excavator in the background. Go uh, down five, five photos, and then you'll see different... Um, different size photos of the bucket wheel excavator. And you'll see other bucket wheel excavators operating, kicking up big tra um, plumes of dust <laughs> around the base where it's digging into the soil. Yeah, most of these pictures aren't very convincing, though. Yeah, I'd have to agree with you there. If you haven't looked at these pictures for years and years and years, um, it's uh, it's it's very difficult to see. Some people can't see. You have it at to all. really have a you really have to have a scientific view into it. Right. But it's hard to say because I mean, I can honestly probably look at one of these pictures and just with my eyes make something else out that ain't there, you know. Okay, now what about the one with it's colorized, a, a pink reddish? The only one that I find kind of interesting is the one with the, the image of the wheel. I find that one the most interesting. Well, I'm going to... Ferris wheel, don't it? Yep, it does. And have you seen the actual photograph of the bucket wheel excavator itself? Or actually, this is the... That's not a bucket wheel excavator. It's a tunneling machine, isn't it? This is probably something our government's working on that they ain't telling us about. 
is humongous. Uh, there's a photograph on there, not from the 